Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And this video is episode three of our Switch Upgrade Project series. And for this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up and configure a Cisco Switch or particularly a Cisco 9300 Switch from scratch. So if you're interested in today's video, please keep on watching and without further ado, let's get started. Also, before we get started, I just want to say before you come to me in the comment section saying that I'm not entering all the commands one by one on the switch. I just want to show you how we do it realistically in production and at work. We don't enter all the configuration and commands one by one, especially if we are deploying hundreds of switches because that's inefficient and that is more prone to errors. Also, I made a video showing all of the switch commands that we're going to use. That is in the preparation phase of a switch upgrade project. So if you're interested to see all of the commands that we use for our template, you can check out that video. So let's get started. Okay, so first thing is getting a new switch from our pile of switches. The first switch that I need to replace has four stacks with two 48 ports and two 24 ports so i need to get the same type of switch and you can actually look for the product number in the package to know which ones are 48 ports or 24 ports so this one says c9300 24ub which means it's a 24 port switch Okay, so now that I've unboxed the switch, the first thing we're gonna do is to power it on, of course. And when you unbox the switch, the power supplies are separate, so you have to put it in first. So the power cable that this switch uses is not like the regular ones. This has like a little notch in the middle which fits the AC power cord connector for this particular power supply. Now that the switch is powered on, you can see all the lights lighting up. Next thing we're gonna do is to access the switch so we can configure it with the commands and the OS and everything. So to get into the switch, physically access the switch, we need a console cable. So it's the blue cable that we can connect the network device into our laptops or computers. And the console cable now has different ends. Sometimes it has a serial end and you need an adapter like this. And sometimes, but there's new console cables now that is USB, so you won't need an adapter. So the USB end will connect to your laptop and the RJ45 end should plug into the console port which usually has a terminal icon here. So let's now go back to our laptop to see what port it's using in the device manager. So under ports you should see like a USB to serial COM port and just remember what port number it is. In my case it's COM3. Now we will be able to console into our switch and I'm going to use PuTTY for this. So on PuTTY, make sure that it's on session and then we can select the serial in here and just type in the port number, which in my case is COM3. And then click on open and then it's going to show a screen now for the console and make sure to press enter. And we now have access to the switch and it's going to ask you if you'd like to enter the initial configuration dialog and I just type in no for this. Also, I forgot to mention that in this video, I'm going to import the configuration files through the TFTP server. So I'm going to need to set up a management IP address first so we can reach the TFTP server. 
and we also need to connect the switch to the network but unfortunately i unbox a blank switch so we would need a network module for this luckily we have ordered extras we're going to use this NM2Y module and this module has two 25 gig SFP28 module slots. Okay, let's go back to the switch and after initialization, it's going to ask you for more options in here. I'm just going to select the return back to the setup without saving this config because we have nothing to save yet. So the next thing I'm going to do is to set a management IP address. I've also plugged in the switch to the same VLAN that I'm going to configure my management IP to. Okay, of course we're going to type in configure terminal first and then we're going to type in the VLAN that we're going to use for management IP and then we're going to type in the interface VLAN 100 command so we can put the IP address on the interface and the command to set up the IP address and your IP address and the subnet mask. And now that we have an IP address, we can now reach our TFTP server so we can import our iOS and configuration files. So the next step would be to copy down our iOS version from the TFTP server. We just got the latest iOS version from the Cisco website and put it in our TFTP server. So this is the command copy space the name of your TFTP server and then slash the iOS file and in our case we're just using a symbolic link called the current version that is a shortcut to whatever the latest iOS file we have on the TFTP server and at the end of our command is where we want to copy our iOS file and it's the flash memory and let's just wait for it to finish importing the file and when it's done, it's going to say it copied the file and it's going to look like this. Then the next step is to install the OS using this command. And it will start installing and will take a few minutes to install and you will get this message when it's done. And we can check if it's successfully installed by using the command show version. And the next step will be to clean off old files just to make sure that we are starting with a clean switch. And we can use this command. And I just said yes to delete all of these old files. And our next step is to copy all of our configuration file templates to the running config. Once again, we already prepared a configuration file template so we don't have to copy all of our commands one by one because that is very inefficient. So if you're interested to see what the template looks like, I also made a video about it. So the first template that I'm going to copy is the one with the basic switch settings like the host name and SSH settings. And same as the config earlier, we are going to copy the config files from the TFTP server. So we're going to do the command copy space TFTP and the name of your TFTP server slash the name of the configuration file and space running config because we want to copy it to the running config. So the next template is for our global config template and it's the same command and we are just going to change the file name for this and save it on the running config. And we are going to do the same for the other templates that we have. We are just going to change the file name but we are going to copy it from our TFTP server and save it on the running config. And after we copied all of our templates, we can also check if all of the configuration applied by doing the show run command. And of course, don't forget to save your configuration. You can do a copy, run, start, or write memory command. Okay, so the last thing to do is to test if you can access the switch through SSH by using the appropriate IP address that you set the switch to. And once that's all working, your switch should be all set and ready to rack. 
So this will be the end of today's video and if you're interested in how we rack the switches in the workplace, I'm also going to show you how we configure our stack switches if your switch requires more than one blade. So that will also be in this series. So thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I hope to see you guys in the next one.